So one of the big benefits to using Inkscape to draw text designs is that you can use the calligraphy tool to make it a little more unique. So I'm just going to click underneath the calligraphy tool. There's a text option and I'm just going to type in the word hello and I'm just going to use a, a type of font called fresh marker. Okay, so I've got this text now that says hello and there's really nothing wrong with this. I'm using a type of font called fresh marker and so it looks like it's handwritten. The problem with this is that the L's are identical. And so what's going to happen is if somebody's, you know, got this on a t-shirt or a design, they're going to look at it and go, oh, it's obviously a mechanical font because the L's are the exact same. So what you can do instead with the calligraphy pen is you can actually draw text. And now I'm drawing with a mouse and I'm using some weird fonts, but you could do that, for example. I'm going to just remove in the calligraphy pen my thinning down to zero. And we can see here that I can draw it completely differently. So if you're using a stylus or some sort of, you know, touch screen, you know, you, that's an option because you'll see now the L's are different, right? And obviously you would change the, uh, the sliders to try to match that font, but you could make some really nice designs with it and have each letter be completely unique. I really like using Inkscape. I think it's one of the best free tools you can get on the internet, but it is a little overwhelming and intimidating when you first log in and if you're a beginner in Inkscape. So I'm just going to run through the menu items here for 10 seconds. On the left hand side, there's a menu. On the right hand side, there's a menu. And on the top, there's a menu. All right. The right menu is if you want to ever like import or export documents, there's also a copy and a paste feature, that sort of thing. We're not really going to be using those very much today. But on the left hand side, we've got a whole bunch of tools we can use. Now, if you're not sure what the tool is, you can just simply hover over each individual icon and you'll see that it comes up with a little description, which is kind of nice. Now, what we're going to be using is this calligraphy tool. You'll notice that the top menu is pretty much grayed out. But when I click on any of these tools, the menu now will become activated. So now that I'm in the calligraphy tool, I've got a whole bunch of these little sliders up at the top and I can use that now to help style the way my pen looks. And I'm just going to be drawing here with my mouse. So right now I've got the width of the pen 20 and I've got everything else pretty much just zeroed out. The caps default setting is, uh, I'm actually going to change that down to zero as well. So what this means is that there's no, well, we'll go through what each of the sliders means, but I'm just going to draw a line now. And you can see that's just me drawing with the mouse. And it's now, this is an item that I can actually use in, in, in Inkscape. I can stretch it. I could, you know, change the size of it, flip it, rotate it. It now becomes essentially an editable object. And this is actually an SVG file. This is a true vector. So when I click on this little nubby icon here at the top, it says edit paths by node. We can see that this is, I'm just going to zoom in. We can see that this is an actual vector with nodes. So it's created a vector and a vector. If you're not sure what a vector is, it's basically a, it's a, like an, it's like an object, but it's got mathematical formulas built in so that it's infinitely crisp and that it will never look pixelated if you use it on a really large stencil or a really large piece of art, like a really large piece of wall art or even a stencil inside of a building. So here you can even edit the paths by node. So I'm just going to, you know, can just move these around and you can actually change the way these all look. And then there's even like little sliders and stuff inside that you can like change here. So there's a lot you can do inside Inkscape with really basic functions. All right, so let's jump in here and see what we're doing. So we've got zero for thinning, zero for angle, zero for fixation, caps, tremor, wiggle, and mass are all zero. These are my sliders that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to use a width of 20 just because you can see it relatively easily on the pad here. This is just an arbitrary number. So I can just draw using the calligraphy tool. I can just draw a line. 
and it just kind of shows up like that. And that's, that's the line right there. Now I can change the color of this really easily. Down at the very bottom, there's a huge color palette. And just simply by clicking the colors, I can change the color of my font to whatever I like. There's a massive, it just goes on and on and on here. So I can make it nice bright blue or, you know, a softer blue. I can make it any color I want. And then right at the very beginning is also black as well. So you can use this. Again, it is an actual vector. I can even just save this as is. I can go file, save as, and it pops up as a drawing and it's an SVG file by default. So you're really working in true vector software here, which is kind of nice. I'll just delete that out and I'm going to try something else here where I'm going to change the sliders now. So thinning is the idea that at the ends, there we go, sliding is 50. What thinning is, is that as you move your mouse quicker or slower, it makes the velocity of the path, it makes the stroke thinner or fatter. So here's relatively straight speed and here's fast speed. And here's really slow and then fast and then slow and then fast. So you can make some really nice already looking designs with this because you're just changing the width of the stroke. So if you want to make something that looks like an ink splot, that's pretty easy to do. So I really like that. It's a really easy tool to use. That one's called thinning. And you can also change the severity of the thinning. If I go right to 100, for example, it'll make a really, really thick line and then a really thin line and then a really thin line. So that's kind of nice if you wanted to do, you know, paint squiggles. There's all sorts of cool art effects that you can make with that very, very quickly. And again, this is all a vector. So you can save it and it will be, I'm just going to zoom in here. This is like infinitely, you know, the, the resolution is infinitely crisp, which is really nice. Now there's a nice little tip here that is a little bit advanced. Not a lot of people know you can go below zero on thinning as well. So I'm just going to go down to minus 50 on thinning. And what will happen is the slower I go, the thinner it is. And the faster I go, the fatter it is. So you can make some really cool designs that way as well. When I click the mouse faster, it actually makes it thicker. The next two items, fixation and angle, are kind of tied together, at least they are in my mind. Fixation, when I hover over it, just says it's the angle behavior. So this is like this little picture here of the pen's nib. You can imagine if you're, you know, writing straight up and down or if you were writing on an angle. So I'm just gonna change I'm just gonna draw a quick one here, just an you know, just a solid line without any, you know, any weirdness just so you can see a comparison and then i'm going to change the fixation now to 45 and you can see when i do this i'm actually just going to ma maximize it right up just so you can see like a full effect of it you'll see that it's looks great and then when i turn it see how thin it is so i'm just going to move that fixation now back down to 45 so we can just see a little less of an exaggeration. So you can see there now, when I move from side to side, this horizontal line is thinner than this vertical line. It's subtle, but if you're doing, you know, high-end calligraphy work or some sort of a design, that may be the effect that you want. Now angle, you notice the top of this thing? When I change the angle button, let's say I change the angle to, you know, 45 or so. When I start drawing, you'll notice it comes in at an angle. So when you use these in conjunction with each other, you can make some pretty wild effects. I'm just going to pump up the fixation and the angle just so we can see just sort of a sort of a dramatic difference here. If you know, if you were drawing a spiral, for example, or a ribbon, you know, you can make some really nice artistic examples because the the width of the line is changing automatically. It's not, you don't have to go in and like manually try to adjust all this. So angle and fixation are ones where you can do minor tweaks to the way that your ribbon of text looks. The caps slider is a pretty nice tool. 
all it does is just increase at the ends of your stroke. It just makes a little bump as if you were writing and you had pen pressure. So I'm just going to make this, I'm just going to write one here first of all without anything. So that's just like a normal looking path. And then I'm going to put the caps on. And you can see now when I draw, it's got rounded edges. 100 is rounded and if you go up above 100, it actually like will make it even bigger at the end. So I'm just going to really exaggerate it. I'll just pump it all the way up to max, which is five. You can see there how it's got very like ovally endings on it. So it kind of looks like a little worm or an earthworm. So you can change the end of how you want the stroke to look, which is really nice too. Caps is a nice feature, very easy feature. Okay, the next one is called Tremor. And what I like about Tremor is it just makes the pen a little bit shaky. So when I hover over Tremor here, you can see it says make, increase to make strokes rugged and trembling. So I'm just gonna put my pen in here and you can see there's not much going on because the Tremor's at zero. But if I increase the Tremor, and the maximum value is 100. So let's start at like say 60. And I draw the exact same line. You'll see how squiggly it is. So this is really nice if you wanna do something that's underlined and you wanna make it look arty. You can also draw like on a curve. I'll just move it right up to 100 so you can see how dramatic it is when you're doing wiggle with 100. The wiggle function is similar to tremor. Uh, you know, it says increase to make the pen waver and wiggle, whereas tremor is to make the strokes rugged and trembling. You pretty much just have to see it. So here's just a regular stroke without anything. And then when I pump up the wiggle, wiggle will go all the way up to 100, same as tremor. So you can just have it, you know, you can get some really nice effects here. It wiggles it when you move it around the slower i go the more it's like it's almost like cake frosting when you're putting it on and then if you go fast you know you can draw a nice line so i use this quite a bit for underlines i'll just go zoop and i'll just make an underline like that and then that'll be my underline see the difference in the width that's a really nice feature when you're making an underline for something and the last effect is called mass and it's really hard to sort of describe it. So I'll just show you what it looks like. So here's just your regular stroke with no, you know, shenanigans going on. And when I increase mass, it says it's, it's inertia on the pen. So it says increase to make the pen drag behind as if slowed by inertia. So then here you can see how it's like really kind of slow. It's kind of a weird effect. I have to admit, I don't use it very often, but the idea is you could use it if you need to use a slow drag for some reason. You know, maybe you want to do something really, like it sort of increases the, the sensitivity of the mouse almost. Now, obviously if you're using a stylus, which is like a little mechanical pen on a touch screen, then you know, you may have greater control than I would have with a mouse. But as you can see here, when I stop, it just instantly stops. And then I can start up again. So you can make some really nice detailed lines here. So what's really nice about this is that you can combine all of these tools together. So for example, I've just got four, 69, 43, caps is 1.1 and tremor is five. And I'm gonna actually use my touch screen and I'm just gonna draw with my finger. And I'll put an underline on there too. So again, I mean, I'm drawing like a preschooler and that's okay. But if you're using a stylus or if you're even just using your mouse, you can also create basically lines and letters that look a lot more real. You know, look at these L's, for example, they're not the exact same. And that's the key if you're creating calligraphies, you don't want everything to just be looking mechanical. And so you can 
play around with these sliders and you can make some really nice underlines. You can make some really nice designs. Here's another one. So that looks infinitely better than if you were to mechanically create a grid and then put in X's that were a type of font uh, because the X's look different. And so it actually looks like a drawing and it is a drawing rather than some sort of mechanically recreated you know, design. So I hope you found that helpful. Some tips and tricks here for you. I love Inkscape. And yeah, leave me a comment. Ask me a question about Inkscape. And feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.